Hello, today we're going to talk about the elements and principles of design through image analysis. As usual, this is the source material we're drawing from, basic visual concepts and principles for artists, architects and designers. And for those who haven't watched my previous video, please do go and watch it where I explain the elements and principles of design. But here is a quick um, refresh. On our left, we have our elements and we think of those as our building blocks. In the middle, we have our principles, how we arrange the building blocks, and then our attributes, and effectively how the building blocks look. So all of these things are created together to create a visual language, to create a response in the viewer. Now, let's jump first. So now I've got a few examples here, and they're from, from some fun big name designers, but let's talk through them. Okay, first we have here, Isimiyaki is using volume to create uh, a space around the body. We call this the body space relationship. Secondly, we can see here a use of line, both in the radiating lines that come out from the body, which aid in our um, creation of volume, but also in the very edge of this ruffle that moves all the way around the body. You can see that Miyaki here is using direction. And as I said before, in those radiating lines moving out from the body to create that volume, but also in that little frilly line that moves around the body, our eyes traversing um, the body moving around the body and we don't really follow the silhouette of the person underneath this helps us increase that level of volume and makes it makes the person appear larger than life we can see the use of repetition here with the repeating lines over and over and over again um, again helping us uh, create that sense of volume It should be said with something like this, this particular design, is that the contrast created, again another principle, between the body, the figure underneath, and the garment itself also aids in the visual communication. Next up we have Hussein Chalayan, an amazing designer from Cyprus. Now you can see here the skirt um, has used plain, wrapping plain around, uh, to create volume. And the volume happens again between the body and the garment itself. Um, this is done in a very different way to the Isimiyaki that we saw previously, whereas this is very geometric, the other one's very chaotic. At the top here, we have a very flat plane. Now, plane, again, as we um, have discussed before, is two-dimensional space. And this has been wrapped around the body, so it's kept very flat against the body. As opposed to the geometry that was in the lower half of the garment, we see significant asymmetry in the top half of the garment. And that is mirrored by the hair, as you can see. Again, we never just look at the garment in, um, in isolation. It's always going to be contextualized. And this asymmetry here, take our eyes to that particular side of the garment. We're going to shift just off center that particular side of the garment. And it gives us as viewer a sense of unease. Now this, this uh, emphasizes the use of contrast that the design is used here. Try to contrast between uh, some kind of seemingly structured geometry at the bottom of the garment, some high volume, um, to low volume, asymmetric, slightly chaotic planes at the top of the garment. And that contrast gives us a, a, a sense of unease. Now this whole collection was about um, displaced people and forced migration. And um, you know you can see those references in the designs there. Next, we move to a classic of the, um, you know, a classic of fashion design, Paco Rabanne from the 1960s. Let's jump in. So we can see plain, 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 nothing but plain uh, is what Paco has created. And repetition, so repeated plain, repeating plain across the entire body. Now, the repetition of plain on the body means the plane will look different. It's the exact same plane placed in different parts of the body. The undulations of the body underneath are what creates the silhouette of this design. Now shape and attribute is really, really important here. So we have plane, our element, repetition, our principle, and shape, our attribute. So if we look at, let's break this one down really quickly. It's a nice, simple one. So we have our plane, that's our element, our building blocks, repetition, our principle, how we arrange the building blocks. So we've repeated them. And then what the building blocks look like, the shape. So Pakaraban here has chosen a very geometric shape, a very non-organic shape or inorganic shape. So the shape itself is in contrast to the, the figure underneath. And that creates a really exciting tension. It means that the shape has a sense of movement as it sits on the body itself. And this creates a pattern. 
So the repetition of shape on the body and the movement of the body itself is actually what creates the visual communication of this garment. A sense of perhaps energy or futurism or kind of clash of technology and uh, humanity. These things kind of working together create something new and interesting. Now we can see this is from 1966, so three years before um, the US landed on the moon. Very much in the heart of this kind of tech-driven space race of the 1960s. We're in that same world right now, except now we're in a virtual space. This is one of my personal favorites. Uh, this is a designer called Elsa Schiaparelli. She's an Italian designer who worked predominantly in um, uh, the US and in Europe in the middle part of the 20th century. And she was known for her connection to the surrealist movement. Let's take a look. So first up we have here is this kind of textural volume created at the top of the garment. Uh, and we see it nowhere else in the garment, but this volume extends the shoulders, even ever so slightly, but extends the shoulders and makes the person appear um, if not larger than they are, but uh, more dominant than they are physically. Then we have line. Now, the designer here has used line very sparingly, but very, very thin, very, very precise lines across the garment itself. And she's done this through the use of direction. Our eye traverses this um, perhaps vase or perhaps um, profile of these people and then up and down this lower portion here which may or may not be a column a column that the vase is sitting on or kind of the shoulders of the people are touching or a kind of stylized version of hair something like that this creates an effect called the kind of trompe l'oeil effect the kind of um, uh, a visual illusion effect and we don't know whether we're supposed to be looking at a vase faces we don't know now the roses on top the kind of volume on top lead us to go from the bottom of the garment through these lines up around the vase shape into the roses and next she's using color very sparingly very very precise use of color and tone the red with the lips matches with the red with the the, the rose and this kind of very sharp bright blue creates high contrast and our eye is drawn directly to that space so we play this kind of visual interplay between vase and face face and vase and it creates an exciting contrast uh, and some exciting tensions for us visually it's a very very clear precise refined piece of visual communication from the designer This next designer we're talking about is a Dutch designer called Iris van Herpen, a bit more contemporary than the other designers that we've looked at. This is from 2012. Um, but worth, worth, worth really, really exploring. An incredible designer and the absolute cutting edge of fashion technology. Let's jump in. So one we haven't seen before, our element here is point. Now the very ends of all these little strands are points and they come little, become little focal points. So our eye is kind of drawn to all these little bits, all these little ends. And she's done that through her use of line, line two points. Now, in contrast to what we saw with Schiaparelli, that line moved from somewhere to somewhere. This line goes from, radiate, radiates out to create that point on the very end. And the garment itself uses dominance. Again, another principle, dominating the figure underneath. So through its use of volume and size, you know, these attributes, but to create um, the... Um, the kind of illusion that's swamping or inhabiting or kind of somehow growing out or over the body. And this is done through the use of closure. Now our eye um, connects all of these points together and it creates for us uh, a sense of closure that we're closing the entire shape together to create that volume. There isn't really any volume here, well there's not physical volume, but there's definitely visual volume that the space that this garment inhabits is significantly bigger than what it actually uh, inhabits. Thank you so much for watching. I'm more than happy to do a million of these videos if you want to see more. Um, please comment. Why not subscribe? Enjoy yourself. Make sure you follow us on Instagram.